Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Talk Scottish Football channel today. Yes. David, you're very excited for this. Your creation here. Oh, don't put all the pressure on me. Well, I mean, rubbish I'm, and I'm nobody not likes it. I'm not, I, I supported it and I've, I've so, not really so well done it. But. We, we've said since the start, obviously we've got the podcast, which we remember we want to get content up for like, we want to get like at least three videos a week. So mm-hmm. we came up with a wee idea of how we, a wee series because you know, there's, nothing like, there's nothing like nostalgia. So... Um, the and there's is, nothing better than the world of Scottish football. Yeah, so, so it goes together hand in hand. The plan is, I mean, we spent so many times talking about like our favourite memories in Scottish football and stuff. So yep. we kind of thought, what well, we'll put away mini series together, just kind of looking back at classic games, mm-hmm. just in the past. It'll, it'll be mainly be in our lifetime. We're not going to go back to stuff we can't remember. Oh no, no, no. Um, I mean, let's s- talk about sixty-seven. Yeah. Oh god. <laughs> what happened in that year again? Um, that year Scotland won the World Cup. The Beatles released yeah. uh, the White <laughs> Album, I believe. Uh, pretty good. Or was it the Sergeant Papers? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I only go explain so, your series. Um, we're going to look back at some classic games. This is something that will appeal to sort of individual fan bases when we pick each game. This one will certainly appeal to uh, an, an individual fan base. So we're going to start today just kind of looking back at the Scottish Cup final of 2016, which is my favourite Scottish Cup final of all time. A close second for myself. Um, and you'll get the flavour of, of what the whole point of the series is. We're yep, just going to basically discuss our memories from it, you know, stuff that we remember. Fan reaction, yeah, all aftermath, rest, but... everything. And just quickly before we move on to today's game and we, we, we discuss one of the greatest games in recent Scottish football, um, if you are a fan of any team watching on, please fire away in the comments games that you would like to see us revisit. Yeah, uh, and, and keep in mind, hopefully we have an actual background on the game. We have memories to share and yeah. stuff. Uh, don't make it something like the 1972 um, <laughs> qualifiers for, um, I don't know, the European Cup. I don't know. Do. Yeah, that, was, um, I, that was just a year it came to my mind. I don't know so, why. And also, in the future, we'll hope to maybe get you know someone who's maybe more... If we're doing clubs that aren't self um yep. we'll get someone who's got maybe more of a specific sort of knowledge. I think this game is, regardless of who you support, is a game that sticks out. Yeah, it'd be great to have guests on. Absolutely. So, 2016 Scottish Cup final. And absolute, let's just talk about beforehand. Uh, right, so that whole season was mental because we'd had a couple of years. So the year before that, we had Hearts who won the championship. And it was Hearts, Hibs and Rangers on the championship. Mm-hmm. And it was amazing. Then Hearts went up, then it was Rangers and Hibs fighting for the championship. Rangers went up under Mark Warburton, played some fantastic football, beat Celtic in the semi-final. You know, yep, had that's, to chuck that in early doors. So this this is what I was going and, to say. And Hibs, this time Hibs were. I mean, the phrase was Hibs it. Yep. The amount of times Hibs very were, famous. They were they were notorious that season for being bottle jobs. Um, they, they'd just been beaten in the playoff by Falkirk uh, a couple of weeks beforehand. They weren't going to go up. They were mm-hmm. staying in the championship for another season, um, and after. 114 years of not winning the cup. The cup was there as was their sort of last, grace. the saving grace for them. What a cup run Hibs had! I mean, they put they put Hearts out. Yep. So ultimately, that was massive. There's, there's a massive moment in itself. Rangers putting Celtic out. So the run to the cup final for these two was just unbelievable, and it was such a running battle between. And Rangers had kind of got the better of it all season. Yep. I mean, Rangers. Let's talk about you know if we're <laughs> talking about our own experiences, our own memories. For me, this final had Rangers written all over it, um, for the sheer fact that. That was the worst experience for a Celtic fan possible only a month beforehand in that semi final. Celtic, that though, wasn't it? Yep, it was. Yeah, absolutely, it because it was the end of the Ronnie Dyer tenure. But Rangers in that semi final prove that well, what they thought they had proved was we're back. You know, this is it. We're going back to the top league. We're in a cup final. We're going to get some silverware. Celtic need to make big changes. And Rangers went into that final, I think, with a lot of confidence and expectation behind them. Yeah. But obviously, Hibs had a lot to prove they had as you have already mentioned it was their saving grace Rangers um, that season played some lovely football especially going forward likes of yeah because Mark Warburton was the next big yeah, thing at the time uh, and he did a very good job like, I mean Waghorn was brilliant Kenny Miller was still chipping in Barry Mackay was the star yep. Andy Halliday in the midfield had was, a fantastic season that year yep the one issue with Rangers that season was always the defence. Kiernan and Wilson. If, when like, you think back every on second that week, now, one of them would have a shocker. Oh you know? my goodness. And that's what cost them. In they also, I, I think the other fullbacks were Lee Wallace and uh, who, Tavernier. Tavernier at the time, yeah. yep. Who, who, Tavernier's twice a footballer now he was back then. Yep. Um, so, I and then, it, yeah. so for Rangers, I think everyone expected them to win it. And Kapoff would have been a brilliant season. They're finally back in the Premiership. Hibs had had a season of. of Everyone just kind of slagging them. You know, yep. they've not got the bottle, they've not got the determination, they've not got this and the next thing. One guy who always sticks out in my mind from that that um, 
Hibs team was Conrad Logan, the goalie. Oh, Remember him? What a man. And the nowhere. size of a boy. Oh, oh, mate. He made me feel that I still had an athletic career. He made me. me feel like I was hope. Um, and he came <laughs> Somewhere. in. I mean, the, the penalty shootout against Dundee United. Yep. He was the hero. And he came that out was, of nowhere. That was, uh, was that the same penalty shootout where Cummins tried to peel? Cummins had that normal time, did he not? Ah, that was it. It was yeah. the same semi final. And uh, I just remember after the game, it was like uh, the new burn that he. I thought with the new burner, I could be a pure boy. <laughs> <laughs> just after the, after it, and honestly, I'm not a big fan of Jason Cummins, but my goodness, God Almighty, what a laugh that gave me. He was, um, yeah, he was, he was, uh, he was very sort of talismanic for Hibs that season. Um, I mean, you look at the, we spoke about a moment ago the Rangers team at the time, which looked like favourites. You look back in this Hibs team, and in recent memory, this is one of the best Hibs teams they're ever going to have. And this was a Championship Hibs side. What a team they had managed yeah. to put together. Five E McGeoch, McGinn, McGinn, Stevenson, McGinn Stokes, Cummins, Henderson, McGregor, David Gray, Hanlon. You know, it was a great Hibs a team. A fantastic Hibs team. Yeah. Um, and just going into that final alone, yes, we might talk about how Rangers were the favourites, but they did have that that kind of you know. It's, you know, it's, it's team more went, what that, that Hibs team have something. done since then. Because uh-huh. even if you look at the bench, you know, Henderson, Marvin Bartley, Martin Boyle, James Keatings. You know what? I mean, what a squad! Rangers only had five subs that James day. James Keating's else. Rangers were struggling. Rangers only had five subs that day. Mm-hmm. Um, so, in terms of the first, I think you know if you look back at it now, when you look at the two teams, you'd have said, "How did Tibbs not go in as favourites?" But so it shows how much every one of them players has come on. Um, the start of that game. I mean, let's talk about before we get into the game itself. Let's talk about our memories of it. Like, where were you? What happened? What was the day? So like? I was, I was just sitting at home. I was just, uh, you know, because my story will be very. I think I've told you my story, but it'll be very different from yours, I imagine. I, I, I think I can't remember. Go and tell oh, us yeah. in, 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 you know, you want to hear mine first. You want to hear mine first. Um, so I thought to myself, bugger this. I was sad. Oh, you were still raging. I right? was raging that it was not Celtic. It wasn't an all green and you white. Getting final. to see a Ronnie Roar in a cup final. Yeah, exactly, and we all knew. It. We all knew it was Ronnie's last. You know, hurrah! Um, so Ronnie's was, last roar. I was. But I'm just, right, keep going. God, that's the series done already. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, um, so you know, me and my pals who were all Celtic fans decided we're not watching this. We're not watching Rangers win the cup. This is how. This is what it was like. This we all thought Rangers were going to win it. Mm-hmm. Everybody who was a Rangers fan was obviously at the game. All my pals are Rangers fans. Were at the game, watching the game. The rest of us who were Celtic fans were like, "Yes, we've got to play football." Right, five asides. Um, buggered the game. Didn't want to watch it. So I'm at five asides. Hibs go up, one 0 We're like, ah, no way. That's kind of happening. Uh, and then you know we're still playing. We get we're sitting there one each side. So that, and that one each came through, and I just turned right. Everybody went. That's, that's it. it. You know, going and then they go up two one. You're like, oh, 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 that's it over. Start to head home. I'm like, ah, right, I'll go and catch the last ten minutes just in case anything happens. I'm on the way home, and Stokesy scores. It's two all. Yeah. And that's at what minute of the game? Like the eightieth, eighty second minute, something yeah, like that. Yeah. Eight, eightieth minute. Yeah. At this point, I'm a good twenty twenty five minutes away from the, the gaff. On a normal day, 25 minutes. I see it's two each. I have never, ever, ever channeled such athletic ability in my career, <laughs> in my life, to make it home. I sprint. I, I, I sprint the rest of the way home. Pat my... And this is... At this point, I was like Yokozuna. So I wasn't... <laughs> I, I wasn't exactly, you know, keeping well. Uh, I sit down on the couch. Within three seconds of me sitting down, Henderson to deliver, David Gray... Bang. Bang, and that's my memory of the game. That was me. That was me that day. Um, so I caught the best part. Yeah, for me it was just standard Scottish Cup. You know, I was just sitting at home in the mm-hmm. house, with my dad watching the game. Um, yeah, I mean, the Scottish Cup final was always brilliant. Um, it was an interesting one this because I think everyone it, the games between Hibs and Rangers that season had been and good, and it was interesting because the season started with Hibs ham- getting hammered by Rangers six two in the Challenge Cup in the first game of that season, and it ended up with Hibs beating them. It was, it was really poetic the way it all worked out. My main memory of this game um, that I take, take it was just like Anthony Stokes was like a man possessed. When Anthony it, Stokes' performance that day was something that... That's the best thing Ronnie Dyla did at Celtic uh, before it, uh, Honestly, the way Stokes played that day, I was buzzing to see him come back to Celtic and do something. But obviously that never happened. Um, uh, I, but it was... Tip, I mean, the first goal especially, it was just woeful defending by... I think it was Kiernan, who was like... Stokes is just running into the box. Surprise, He's just letting surprise. him run into the box. And it was kind of just like showing exactly what um, Rangers season had been about they were letting themselves down defensively but Hibs had so many chances in that first half I think I think uh, Stokes hit the post as well yep he did um, 
But Rangers right. came back and Kenny Miller scored a great goal, great header from Miller. Um, and then and then all of a sudden after Hibbs having the better of it, Rangers found themselves two one in front in the second half with a brilliant goal by Halliday. Mm-hmm. Brilliant. That was an absolute belter. You off. know, and he was. Uh, you think about what Andy what Halliday's become now. He's now like a the banter player, player. left back. The banter player. Whereas he's he was, the Johnny Hayes of he Rangers. He was flying for Rangers in midfield that season. I mean, it he was because I mean, as much as you might not want to admit it, he absolutely no, dominated no, I'll, Celtic. I'll happily, in that, I'll that happily sit down and admit because the one thing that I said about Rangers coming back to the Premiership the following season was Halliday will be the player to to watch. Yeah, and he was absolutely useless. <laughs> he was, he's, and he has been for the past. You know, he's had his odd performance when he's been good and fair play. He's been he's been a character who's stuck through Rangers uh, over the past three years, and he's. he's captain the side at points just, he's, he's been a servant a great yeah. servant for Rangers but he's just you know he's proven he might not be that much good just that incidentally season. when you look at the contrast in fortunes from the first 11s that day so like you look through Rangers team arguably the only one that's gone on to better things is Martin Waghorn yep I think he's who's now one. playing alongside Wayne Rooney yeah so you look at the rest of that team like Tavern oh Tavernier as well yeah, fair yeah. enough he's better than he was but Fodringham no Kieran no Wilson no Wallace no Zalalem no Halliday, no. Miller, no. Mackay, no. Holt, no. But then you look at the Hibs team. John Darren McGinn. Mac- Darren McGregor, more of the same. John McGinn, yes. Hanlon, yes. John McGinn has now spoke about as one of the best centre mids in the country. Yeah. Um, Stevenson, say. yes. Gone up with Hibs, done even better. McGeoch, yeah, he's, he's, he's tailed away now, uh, so maybe not as much. Marvin Bartley, yes. Martin Boyle, yes. You know, Liam Henderson's over in Italy. So, like, if you look at the two teams now, the Hibs have gone on, the players have gone on to a lot better. Um but yeah, at two-one Rangers, I thought, oh my god, they've nicked it. Because I mean, Hibs were the much better team that day. There was yep. no, it felt like it was going to be Hibs's are. day. Um, and it was that kind of. Do you know what I get from that game? It's the typical Hibs against the, you know. But that was the, the thing. All the storyline that season great. was, oh, they've Hibs it. They've Hibs it. They chucked it. They bottled it again. And the determination from the Hibs players to make sure they didn't do that. I mean, the last ten minutes are just magical to watch oh, back. Like, I mean, it, it gives me. I'm not a Hibs fan. No, I, I, I don't want to. And this I've said in this channel, I don't want to. I don't want to annoy the Rangers fans, right? But I mean, everyone in the country, what apart from them, wanted Hibs to win this. Um, so then Stokes goes and gets Maybe the as well. Stokes goes and gets the aye, Stokes gets the equaliser. Last ten minutes, right? Okay, and it looks like it's destined for extra time. And then Ian Crocker, you know, the the on the line. It's Henderson to deliver. And then just boom, you just hear the crowd. Dive it, crowd. And it's the scenes in the air. It's just I uh, love it. I love watching. Like, I've always gave Hamden. And the captain. I've always well. gave Hamden a lot of stick. I'm not a fan of Hamden. People know that, and you are. I know I you're a it. massive fan of yeah. Hamden. But one thing I will never get sick of. One thing I'll never tire of seeing is the reaction in the Hamden ends, the goal ends at Hamden. Yeah, because when that's a goal I think like it looks that so goes in, cup finals, you've got a half each. Yep. I, just I just love it when you know every time there's a big winner, a big goal at Hamden. It just there's something magical about how the fans look. Yeah. It's it's tremendous, and, and that is a prime for, example for the of it. To score the winner potentially, in the potentially minute. the greatest example of it. Ending that 114 year wait, you know, yeah. they go on, you know, the chant now, Hibs, Hibs, you know, yeah, I'm going, yeah. you know, stuff your 1902. Yeah, it was just, it was, it was, it just almost felt like, I think, Alan Stubbs came out post match. I mean, that was another thing. I think I, I, everyone, a lot of people felt really happy for Alan Stubbs because mm-hmm. he's he had a tough year, not getting them up and stuff, and people were. You know, slagging off. His I was like, propelled him on to what seemed like maybe bigger things, but didn't, didn't, didn't turn out. out. But I mean, what a what a way to do it with your captain to score that late on oh, the scenes. Um, Hibs just Hibs on that day were just unreal, and John McGinn, Dylan McGeoch, just fantastic. And it was the real indication of what to expect when they did come up. Also, Neil Lennon came in the yeah. season after, did get them promoted. Yeah. But that was the season I think that really. I mean, you talk about that game. Below. That but, game was the catalyst for yeah. what was to become of Hibs for the next two years because they got promoted the next year. Let's think about Hibs' path afterwards. Hibs get promoted the next season. They then come back to the Scottish Premiership, and in their first season, should have, should they definitely should have. They just bottled it a couple of times. They Hibs it. They should have finished second. <laughs> but they yeah, should have finished second that, that that's season. The thing, like I mean, I always think I, I've always liked watching Hibs because you always think of Hibs like attacking football. You know, mm-hmm. high tempo and stuff like that. And, this game was a perfect sort of, you know, description of that. And, and to, I mean, to not go up, they were disappointed, but I don't think there's a single Hibs fan in the whole world that would have would have rather to go up than win the Cup. Oh, Every, no. I mean, 114 years. That and is... that was the thing, everyone used to always say, uh, since Hibs last won the Cup. And that's like that was a thing, it was such a big thing. And for a club that size to go that long without winning win it, the it was Cup. just... I because suppose we have to come on to the, the post-match. Yeah. I'm yes. gonna I'm gonna I'm yes. gonna I'm gonna kick us off with what I, my feelings on this, right? I would have been in the park. I would I would also <laughs> be in the park. Absolutely. And like 
the I mean, Hibs fans don't see cup success too often. The Hibs fans <laughs> attack the Rangers players and all that embarrassed and stuff. He should never have done that. But uh-huh. the people that got more on their high horse about Hibs fans going in the park, load of nonsense. Every single one of them in that situation would be on, on the park. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, even if you won the cup in the last minute, there's a chance people would have gone on. Right. But see, when you've done it after not winning it for 114 years, you're Here is my point, on. right? I Once again, this is not, can I just reiterate, this is not bashing Rangers in any form. <laughs> I condone this. Do it. Do it. Nah, I'd be not. Right? What I condone it, what, what I'm going to say is, I said condone again. What I'm saying is, Rangers fans who were bashing Hibs for doing that that day and stuff like that, listen here and listen to me very clearly. The day Rangers finally win the league title again, wherever it may be, Ibrox, Celtic Park, if they do it in the last minute, Hill, they're on the park. Doesn't even matter if it's last minute. When that final whistle goes, when they win the league again, whether it's before or after, ten in a row. They will be on the park, and yeah. quite rightly so, because they've waited so long to see it yeah. happen again. The thing is, I mean, the Hibs fans that went towards the Rangers players and stuff, just a lot of nonsense. Like, I mean, my, mm-hmm. like, they're just idiots. Yeah, I, your I, first thought after that. That's the thing. You just know, to go and go, I mean, that's mental. What I hate is obviously... And the thing is, that, that's the thing that made the rest of the Hibs fans look ridiculous. Yep. Because people got on their high horse, oh, it's brought a downer on it. You know, a situation, you all been on the pitch, a situation it? like that is always going to present a few absolute yeah. nut yeah. jobs yeah. who... Shouldn't be doing that, but it, it shouldn't represent the entire fan base. No, of course not. Shouldn't uh, represent the I mean, fan base. It was. I remember. I, this is actually my probably the most striking memory of this was probably the aftermath of this game because I remember sitting in the house like the Sky coverage had finished, and David Tanner was on, and David Tanner was talking about it as if it was like, like a war scene. It was mental the way they were dramatising <laughs> it. Um, I remember we switched on the radio, listening to I think Off the Ball was on, and uh-huh. like Chick Young was live. At, um, it was Tam Cowan on? I know, but Chick Young was live at Hamden uh, doing interviews uh-huh, with players and stuff uh-huh. for off the ball, um, and it was just like the, there was such a big debate about how this had ruined the day and stuff. And all I could think was, if I'm a Hibs fan, I couldn't care less what Chick Young, oh, no. Cosgrove, and Tam Cowan think. I couldn't give a. We've just won the cup. Yeah, you know? I, as a fan, purely from a fan perspective, bugger the media. Yeah, I know we are sitting here being aspiring journalists, but, <laughs> but, but you know what I mean. If I, I honestly, the, the only thought for me is right up back up to Leaf. Lock in. I think, Lock I in. think <laughs> Tam Cowan had gone to. I remember this is one thing I remember from that off the ball broadcast was, um, uh, Chick, were you on the pitch at 77 when Scotland fans ran on at Wembley? Yeah, I've got a bit of the turf at home. It's just like it summed it all up. Aye. Like the, the hypocrisy. Yeah, it was mental. So, um, but it was the way it was all treated. Like it was like it was natural. Like it was like a national state of emergency. I know exactly. But afterwards, after that, the rendition of the Sunshine, Sunshine Leaf. This is my only real thing that I think was a letdown that day was the fact they never got to go do the lap of honour. Mm. Like, that was because it just Aye. didn't quite look right. They were still in the stand, the Hibs players. That's the one thing that didn't didn't maybe put a damp on the day, kind of. Especially for the players because they would have uh-huh. liked to have gone around. But yep. that rendition of Sunshine and Leaf, yeah. I'm sure their, their welcome back to Leaf was good enough. Oh, I mean, I'm the, sure they're they're the, big, the big trophy parade through Leaf yep. would have more than made up for it. But Aye. yeah, it was... Um, an unbelievable day and you know for the Hibs players that might be their only way downfall they didn't go on but I mean I can't, I can't imagine the feeling the Hibs fans I mean and that's the sort of things you live for in football is moments like that and mm-hmm. absolutely wow. what, what because for them. I know what it's like to win a cup in the last minute and for them it must have been as much as that was incredible for Celtic uh, the invincible season for Hibs fans to finally end that way with a 90 second minute goal yeah. it just it, club, club I'm getting chills well. thinking about yeah, it and I'm not a Hibs fan it's the stuff you live for in football yep. I mean exactly I, and I it's mean, why it's a great sport in the world I couldn't imagine how like how they Hibs fans would have felt that day I mean it's just unbelievable and when I think about how great I feel when the fans win the average game last <laughs> minute. I mean, even that feeling like to win the average game last minute is an unbelievable feeling mm-hmm. so to do that with all the baggage and stuff and everything the whole season it was like I mean the outpouring of emotion from the Hibs players at full time was so evident because it's like it's not like they'd I think if they'd have gone up that season and won the championship, I don't think that would have been as big a, a bigger moment. But because of all the disappointment and the accusations of them being bottlers and stuff, that must have just added to the sort uh, of joy the for the Hibs fans and the players. And what a day! What a day! Best cup final I've ever watched. Second best. My favourite one. Um, your second best. We'll, we'll, we'll probably come on to your first best later on in this series, but um, at some point. Yeah. What? What a! What a! What a cup final! And it was just a credit to the whole. Scottish football that day. It was. Uh, and and especially thing, and you, people about don't scenes, but it was people game. don't remember that that was a final contested because the of two ch- two championship mental. clubs because they're that big. Yeah. But it is honestly, it's just what an advert, and it, it just it, and I know we spoke about it. And we're, we're we're wrapping it up, I suppose, but it baffles me that the team, the Hibs team that day, how it's how it's been, and the, the, the 
I'm such a big John McGinn fan. Nice, nah, he's, he's Scotland's best player. Um, aye, and oh my god, just the way that some of the careers have went for some players throughout. It's just a, a lovely story. Um, yeah, I know, and I just think that. Yeah, well, I mean, the, I think the year before that, the cup final was Falkirk and Burness. So it was mm-hmm. like three championship clubs in two cup finals. So yep. you back, it was just, and uh, that was the time where everyone said that Rangers being in the championship was going to kill, being the lower leagues was going to kill Scottish football. Mm. But during that time, you had Hibs win a cup, you had Inverness win a cup, you had County win St. a cup, Johnson. you had St. Johnson, Aberdeen, you know, so tell that to them teams that it was Armageddon after Rangers left. But no, um, what a brilliant cup final. And, the glory and, days. Yeah, it was just, and it was hammed in the sun as well. Everything about it was just amazing. Yep, because um, that was one of the big differences that I wish we got from the, 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 the game that day to the year after. Was it the weather? Because, yeah. my God, going to, going to Hamden in the thunder and light, and this yeah. is not great. Well, yeah. Um, and I'm sure we'll talk about that that, that game at some point later on. Um so yeah, I'm sure that was a wee video for the Hibs fans to enjoy. Yep, I um, hope you did enjoy it. Let us know your memories. There's, there's nothing like a bit of nostalgia. I mean, for a Hibs fan that wants to be, there's so much you could talk about. And that's I the mean, thing, it'd be good to hear, like, because there'll be Hibs fans who have like specific memories of where they were and stuff, and even like the average Funny people, like, where, where were you when this is? Yep. That's what we want to hear in the comments. Where were you uh, when David I guarantee Day... someday... Uh, was involved in a childbirth that day. A Hibs <laughs> fan was involved in a childbirth and they called her son David. Yeah, oh, guaranteed. I mean, the, 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 but I want to know where you are when David Gray scored that goal. Um, so, yeah, that was fun. Just reminiscing. That was, I know. Um, I'll, so, yeah, I'll, another I'll, thing I'll we want to hear. So, we want to hear where you were when David Gray scored that goal. We also want to hear your suggestions of games you want us to cover. Um, yep. A lot. There's we, a lot. Of there games are a lot. I mean, even just we've got ideas of ourselves, stuff we want to talk about. Um, but yeah, nostalgia is not quite what it used to be, yeah. You know, nah, so no. we, we want we, we we enjoy reminiscing about all the, the glory days of Scottish football. So yes, we do. And um, we hope you've enjoyed this. And yeah, leave us your suggestions of future games to cover. And that was definitely one for the Hibs fans. Like and subscribe, everybody. And yep. uh, I will see you in the next video. Cheers. <laughs>